I would like to share with you a passage of scripture that has been very inspirational to me and very challenging. It is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 36 and verse 8. And the message for tonight is simply this. Giddy up. Giddy up. Isaiah chapter 36 and verse 8. I tell you what, strike a bargain with my master, the king of Assyria, and I will give you 2,000 horses if you can find that many men to ride on them. Strike a bargain with my master. This bombastic general said, strike a bargain with my master. His name is Reb Shekha. Reb Shekha said to the little small nation of Judah led by King Hezekiah, strike a bargain with my master and he will give you 2,000 forces if you pitiful Jews, if you pitiful Jerusalemites can find men to ride. You know, if anyone is going to achieve anything in society, there is one virtue that those who achieve greatness must have, must constantly cultivate. And that's the virtue of confidence. The Bible says, do not throw away your confidence, but in it you have a great reward. Confidence. Confidence is the assurance that you can do what God says you can do. You can be what God says you can be. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, you can achieve what God said you can achieve. Confidence looks at bold, ambitious dreams and says, it's a big dream, but because God is with me, there is no dream too extreme. In Louisville, Kentucky, I will never forget perhaps one of the greatest displays of confidence that I have ever seen. It was during Derby weekend, and on Broadway, which is one of the main arteries in downtown Louisville, you have vendors from all over the country who are selling their wares and selling food. And there was a particular brother from Atlanta who had set up right on Broadway a chicken, makeshift chicken shack which he was frying chicken, but he was frying his chicken with confidence. And all the makeshift chicken shack, as he was frying his chicken, and customers were lined to get his chicken, he had a little sign on the shack that read, if the colonel had my recipe, he would be a general. <laughs> Suffice it to say, he had a lot of takers simply because he had confidence. And confidence, my brothers and sisters, is contagious. Conversely, the lack of confidence is also contagious. I believe that whenever Satan wants to attack a person, he, he attacks a person in many instances, on the confidence level. He makes you question your capacity, your ability. He makes you feel sorry for yourself. He makes you become a victim. When we study the history of African Americans in this country in light of Dr. Martin King Jr.'s birthday, 
I will submit to you that the greatest crime that was perpetuated against Africans in this country was that racism eroded the confidence of Africans. Men and women who were once proud Yorubas, Ashantes, and Akons were de-Africanized and thingified, and their confidence was eroded. And even today, there are still the chains of psychological slavery because when the chains were removed from ankles and wrists, chains were not removed from minds, psyches, and perceptions. I reread recently Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s response to clergymen in Birmingham who called for Dr. King to engage in gradualism to effectuate social change in Birmingham. And he said, it is difficult to be gradual when you're seeking change. <clears throat> when you see your child not being allowed to go to an amusement park because of their color, and you have to explain to them why they cannot go into the amusement park. And when you explain to them it's not for Negroes, Dr. King says, it's hard to be gradual when you see, and I quote him verbatim, the clouds of inferiority beginning to flow in their mental skies. The lack of confidence. Confidence is important. Confidence. And this is what this passage is about. That's why I love it. The, the, the children of you know, Judah, the little small nation of Judah, when you consider Judah in comparison to her neighbors, Judah was so insignificant. It was so small. And during the time that Isaiah wrote the passage that I read, the colossal superpower of the day that was on the move was Assyria. Assyria, under the leadership of that great, mighty king that everyone feared by the name of Sennacherib, like dominoes, nations were falling under the might of the Assyrian army, including Judah's northern neighbor, the nation of Israel. And now Sennacherib has sent one of his field generals, whose name is Rebshekah. And Hezekiah, the king of Israel, of Judah, is trembling, wondering how are we going to defend ourselves against the might of the Assyrian army? What are we going to do? General Rebshekah and his soldiers form a siege around Jerusalem, forcing Jer the Jerusalemites to capitulate, to surrender. And they're engaging in psychological warfare. Reb Shekha says to them, you little puny Jews, who are you to stand up against my master Sennacherib? Do you think you're greater than these other nations? Who defied my master? He said, who are you? He, he boasted of Assyria's invincibility. And he also spoke to the Jews about their vulnerability. And he said, who are you to stand up against us? You don't have, you don't have anyone, you have no allies. In fact, that God that you claim to be your God, well, that God that you pray on, he, he can't help you. In fact, he's on our side. He told us to come and destroy you. And all of this was designed to undermine the confidence of the Jews. 